What's going on guys, here today showing you how to replace a thermostat on a 2006 Mercedes E350. This is the M272 engine, the infamous 272 engine. It's found in various uh, models of Mercedes from 2004 through I think the R350 still used it all the way into 2017. If you have a 350, you know, a C350, a E350, an S350, an R350, so on and so forth, um, you more than likely will have this engine if it was made between 2004 and 2017. Um, the thermostat is kind of, it's just pretty much these upper radiator hose goes right into the thermostat housing. Um, so you'll want to make sure to get a, a, a new thermostat housing, preferably one from Mercedes. Um, that would be the best one you can get. And um, the first thing you'll have to do is jack up the car. As you can see, jack it up, got it on jack stands. And you'll have to go underneath the car and drain the radiator out. So if we take a peek down here on the bottom, you will be greeted by a bunch of splash shields. Sorry, I can't zoom out the camera anymore, but pretty much this splash shield, this splash shield needs to come off. The radiator drain is on the driver's side. I'm in the state, so on the left-hand side of the car, pretty much kind of like, if you look at the front of the car here, um, there's a fog light. The radiator drain is right here. The splash shields are held on by uh, various eight millimeter screws like you see here. I think there, you're gonna have to take off this one first. Should have four, one here, one on the other side, and two in the back holding it on and then that'll just fall down. You can uh, slide it backwards. And then this front cover here, again, sorry, the camera's not focusing. The front cover here, I think has uh, maybe six screws, one here, one in the front. And then there's some right here, like in, in front of the wheel well, like in front, just in front of the wheel, I believe that you gotta remove. So uh, we'll go on ahead and uh, take that off now. Okay, just like that, got the covers off. Now, um, I guess it would depend on what year your car was made. Um, this car does have the drain on the driver's side. However, it's not facing the same direction a later model car that I just worked on, like a 2010, I believe. Um, that drain was actually right here on the side. You can see this red knob right here is what you need to turn you know, to the left to open up the valve to allow it to drain. And right here where I'm pointing, sorry, it's not really focusing on it. I know it, it can't, but right here where I'm pointing at, there is a, uh, a little nipple that you can either attach a, you know, you can attach a uh, small length of rubber hose to it so it can drain straight down, or you can just open it up and let it come out if you want. But that's where you need to drain out the radiator. Um, don't, I mean, you could pull off the lower radiator hose and go about it that way if you want, but that's way more of a mess. So I'm going to go ahead and just open up this here drain and get it drained. So basically you just need to drain the radiator out. However you want to do that, uh, go, go about it however you'd like. Okay. So after your coolant is drained. Um, sorry, it's windy also, so if you get some wind noise, I apologize. Um, coming up top here, we just need to remove this uh, plastic engine cover. It just lifts straight up, and you can just set it back here. Um, now, in order to get to the thermostat housing, which is right here, um, it's, well, it's not actually right here. It's right behind this here uh, hose. Um, some people have gotten it off 
without having to remove this auxiliary air pump. However, I like to remove this auxiliary air pump because I don't like fighting things. And if you look real closely, it's very difficult to get to the top bolt that's back here. Again, it's possible with like a wobble socket and you could do that. But like I said, I don't like battling things when you don't need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this here auxiliary air pump. Um, these hoses, right? this hose right here will have to come off. This hose right here will have to come off. And then there's five, I believe, T30 Torx. Um, I will double check that, so don't get in the comments and tell me right away. I'm gonna double check that it's T30. I'm pretty sure they're T30, but I will let you know for sure when I go ahead and start to remove it. First thing we'll need to do, though, is to remove these hoses. Um, be careful by now because they might be kind of brittle. But you can use a flathead screwdriver to kind of help you uh, start them off. Like so. The other one should just pull off. You can just set it to the side. This one right here will probably be a little bit more difficult to get off. But you um, should be able to maneuver it off as best as you can. Like so. Um, now there is one electrical connector back here. Uh, when you're looking at the back of it, if you just take it and pinch it like this, just like how I am on the on the back of the pump, pinch it, uh, it'll come off. You might need to use a pair of pliers to come at it from the side, or you might even need to use two fingers to kind of pinch it and pull it off. It will be on there pretty well, um, but if you just are able to pinch it and pull it off, it shouldn't be a problem getting it off. So I pinched it there and I used the uh, flathead to kind of help me pry it off. This is the little connector right here. It's just a simple little connector back there. There is one more rubber hose that's attached right down here on the side. Um, you could try and just pull it off now uh, with the flathead. However, you're not gonna pull this hose completely off. It'll kind of, it'll just stay in place. When you pull the, when you pull the pump out, it'll uh, disconnect itself from that hose, but you can just leave the hose attached to the uh, diaphragm that it's attached to on the bottom. So let me go on ahead and find out the correct torques for this, and then um, we can try and go ahead and get that off. Okay, so um, this is the other hose right here I was talking to you about that's gonna come off when you pull the pump off. You can try and just pry it off now if you want with a screwdriver. Otherwise, when you take the pump off, you know, you can just slip it off at that time as well. This is the connector back here I was talking to you about. You just pinch it on the sides and it will come off. Now, there are five bolts holding this pump on. Because I can see, as you can see, we need to get to that back bolt back there for the thermostat housing and it's kind of difficult to get back there. So that's why I'm removing this pump. Um, there's one T30 right here. There's a T30 right here. And then also, it's kind of hard for me to get at, but you can see there are a total of three more screws right directly where I have the camera angle. There's one down here on the bottom. And then there's two shorter screws right here that actually hold this here, this here bracket on. So you'll have to remove all three of those, preferably remove the two shorter screws first, and then remove the long one down there. If you find that you're having trouble getting these, get, getting to these bolts because the serpentine belt's in the way, um, don't worry, we have to take off the belt first. So. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll probably just show you how to take the belt off now So that way you don't have to uh, fight your way around this serpentine belt So let's go on ahead and do that actually first and then we'll get to taking off the uh, Auxiliary pump. Okay in order to get the serpentine belt off first What you need to do is get your phone and take a picture or draw a diagram on a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper or something So you can remember how the belt is routed around uh, Please do that because if you don't I mean, there is Google, you can find it, I'm sure, but you know, just take a picture or draw a diagram so you know how to put it back on. Um, in order to get the belt off, you just have to locate the belt tensioner, which is this pulley right here, this guy right here. You can see I have a 17 millimeter uh, socket. It slides right over a bolt looking deal. It, it's not actually a bolt, it just allows you to move the tensioner. So what you wanna do is get yourself a, you know, a long breaker bar like I have right here and then um, get on that 17 millimeter uh, stud there and just um, 
spin the or pull the bar left loose right's tight um, you want to pull it to the left to relieve the tension on, on the belt as you do that then you can just slip the belt off of the pulleys and the belt will be off and out of your way so let's do that so I got the uh, breaker bar on I'm just leaning my weight as it's going left and I'm able to do, to then just uh, slope the belt off like so and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it right there you don't have to take the belt all the way off I'm just removing the belt so we can get to the uh, uh, auxiliary pump bolts easier all right now we can focus on getting these t30 torx bolts off so I'm gonna go ahead and start on the bottom ones like I said I apologize you can't really get an angle at me taking this off but you know I showed you where they're at so I'm gonna go ahead and just pull them all off now um, you need to take your time in taking these off because you don't want to drop them down to the motor. Um, possibly if you have a magnet, that would be great. It'll help you pull them out. Okay, so this here bracket is now pretty much loose. I'm going to loosen the very, uh, very bottom bolt now. Like I said, there's two short bolts, two long bolts. Short bolts are for the brackets, the long bolts are for everything else. Okay, now that is loose, like so. Um, you will have to slide it out from behind this bracket and also loosen up that rubber hose I was telling you about. So that way you can get everything off. And this should just lift up and you can just set it down to the side. And as you can see now, we have plenty of room to get to the thermostat housing, which is right here. Okay, now we are at the thermostat housing. Um, if you didn't catch the part number already, um, you should have a Mercedes part number A272200049. Um, it's a brand new thermostat housing. It comes with the thermostat. Uh, or the coolant temperature sensor is in located inside the housing already and it comes with a new gasket. So it'll, it'll look something like this deal here. New sensors in there and uh, there's a new gasket as well. So that's what you should have got. Um, first thing you wanna do is to remove this upper radiator hose. If you look, there is a metal tab here. Um, it simply just slides straight off of the hose. Um, you'll just wanna kinda just push it down like, like so, or if you wanna completely remove it, like I like to do anyway, um, just take it off completely. Now the hose should just pull straight out. I say that like it'll be easy. Sometimes it actually, they do get corroded in there and it's kind of hard to pull them out. But what you don't want to do is yank on it too hard because you don't want to break this small little uh, plastic piece here because then you'll have to buy a whole new hose. So um, if you want, get yourself a small screwdriver, try and like pry the, the hose out, but just take your time and try not to damage it. Just like so and we could just tuck this off to the side um, if it's dirt I don't know why there's sand in here but if it's dirty go on ahead and get yourself a rag and wipe it out even though we're gonna replace it I just don't want to pull it out and then all that dust or something goes into the engine and I just don't want that so the next thing we need to do is to remove the um, small electrical connector that's on the bottom of this. Now you can go about this two ways. Um, if you notice there's a wiring harness right here, 
goes down and is zip tied down here on the bottom. You could cut the zip tie, take off the housing, turn it around and then undo the connector or you could just try and reach down and undo the connector now on your own down here. Uh, it just has a little push tab on it. You just kind of squeeze it like we did the other one for the auxiliary pump. Uh, just like this guy right here. Remember if you squeeze this one to take it off. This one you just kind of just push it in towards the motor and pull it off. So I'm going to go ahead and try and get it off now. Just like so. It is going to be very brittle because, you know, it's there's a lot of heat in here. So I got this one off and it uh, wasn't a big deal to get off. You can see see this this harness right here is just crumbling to pieces. So do your best to, uh, I'm gonna have to get a vacuum now and, and vacuum all that up, but do your best to get this connector out. Like I said, alternatively, the easier way to probably do it would be to cut the zip tie, take this housing off, flip it upside down and then take the uh, connector off. So however you want to go about doing it, you can do that. Um, I got mine off, so it's no big deal. Um, the next thing you want to do now is to this here idler pulley that's right below it because it's blocking the, it's blocking the lower bolt for the housing. So sometimes these have covers on them. Sometimes they don't have covers on them. This one does have a cover. You can see I just popped it off. And uh, if you look inside here, there'll be a Torx I believe it's a T40, let me double check. Okay, so no, actually this one is a, is a T50 Torx. Looks something like this. Uh, you'll need to loosen and remove this bolt. Um, and then we can get to the thermostat housing bolts. Okay, now that we got that off, we can go on ahead and remove the two bolts that hold on the thermostat housing. Uh, there's just two, one on the top, one on the bottom. They're held on by a E10 Torx. It kind of looks like the Torx we were just using, but it's a female version. So, go on ahead and remove both these bolts. There probably will be a little bit of coolant that comes out, so just have your uh, drain pan down there to catch it. Right now, this probably won't come loose, so grab yourself either a rubber mallet so you can just tap the top of this. Um, I don't know where my rubber mallet is, so I'm just gonna use a hammer and I'm going to put a cloth on here and just kind of tap it and that should break it free. Just like so. You can see it's out now. I'm gonna go ahead and try and clean this area up. Clean the ceiling surfaces up. If you want to get yourself a razor blade, um, very gently scrape off the some of the old gasket here around, and then that way you can install your new uh, thermostat. Okay, now that we've got everything cleaned out, um, you can go on ahead and re reinstall your new thermostat housing. Um, you want to torque these bolts down to 18 foot-pounds um, or 25 Newton meters. Um, I'm going to use an inch-pound wrench so you just multiply 18 by 12 and you get 216 inch-pounds. doesn't really matter whatever wrench you want to use. Newton meters is 25, foot-pounds is about 18.4 and inch-pounds is 216. So um, you go on ahead and install it in there and start both of the bolts by hand and then go ahead and torque them down uh, correctly.
you get them both torqued down, go on ahead and reconnect the uh, wiring harness to the coolant temperature sensor on the bottom. After you get the sensor back in, you can go on ahead and reinstall the idler pulley that sits just below it. You also want to torque that down to 25 Newton meters as well. Okay, now that we got that back on, you can go on ahead and simply push the upper radiator hose back into the thermostat housing. Make sure you hear it click and you get a positive engagement. Do note that there is notches. There's a notch here and a notch on the other side. Make sure they line up with where they need to go. So you heard that click into place. It shouldn't come back out. It should be um, good to go now. So now what we need to do is to reinstall the um, auxiliary air pump with the five screws and um, we can get back to putting the rest of it together. Okay, so now we get to put the air pump on. Um, if you look at the long side of the air pump where this little leg is coming off, um, it needs to slide behind the bracket that you took the two bolts off. It needs to slide behind it. And there's also some vacuum hoses back here that are yellowish that you gotta watch out for. So it needs to slide behind there. And also you need to reattach the hose that's right here as well. Let's see if I can get you a little closer picture. Yeah. So it needs to go in front of these little hoses and it needs to go behind this little bracket. So it's kind of take a little bit of finesse, but should be able to get it in there uh, with a little bit of patience. So just try your best to kind of get it back there. And don't forget to hook up the uh, rubber hose. Now what you want to do is try to line up all of these bolts first by hand. So if you can start them all by hand, uh, then you can tighten them all down one by one. Also don't forget to plug in the electrical connector in the back. Okay, I got those all started by hand. So now I'm just going to go ahead and tighten them all up. I got those all tightened up. Don't forget to put the cat back on this uh, idler pulley here. Should just snap back on. Like so. Um, now we can go on ahead and put the belt back into place. Um, if you remember how you got it on. Um, me personally, I'm probably going to I'm probably going to try and get the alternator on last just because that's looking like the easiest way to go about it. Once again, get your 17 millimeter, get it on the end of the uh, tensioner down there at the bottom, apply some left left or counterclockwise pressure to it and uh, get the belt on. Okay, I got the belt back on. So the only thing left to do now would be to put the rubber hoses back on here. Uh, remember this guy right here? And then the smaller guy on the other side right here where this opening is at. Then we can snap the uh, engine cover back into place and fill it up with coolant. Um, when you're filling it up with coolant, fill it all the way up until you can't anymore. Well, don't fill it all the way up. You'll fill the reservoir until uh, the, the coolant level actually touches the bottom of the, the black plastic here. You'll see that this reservoir split into two halves. The top is black, 
the bottom is you know supposed to be clear you want to fill the coolant up until it reaches where they meet turn the car on turn the heater on to max hot turn the fan on and then start the car up and just let it idle uh, you'll be adding coolant if you need to um, you'll want to just make sure there's no leaks or any of that just like so so like I said going ahead and uh, top it off with coolant start the car up and uh, turn the heater on and make sure you're trying to bleed out the coolant and then just check for leaks and make sure there isn't any and that's all there is to it um, it's a little bit more difficult than other cars to do a thermostat on but definitely very doable at your house um, I'm doing this because this car had a P0128 code which is extremely common with these and since you can't buy the um, coolant temperature sensor separately that's why you end up just replacing the whole thermostat housing uh, you could get different thermostat housings made by aftermarket companies. I don't suggest it. I suggest going and just get the one from Mercedes. Um, you can get them online. You can get them at the dealership, wherever you want to get them at. Um, because they work the best and they always come with the gasket. And, you know, they fit right because it's made by Mercedes. So, um, if you have any comments or questions, ask them in the comment section below. I would appreciate you guys stopping by. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button on your way out. And I will catch you guys next time.